I think that growing your own food requires tremendous patience. In many cases, it takes weeks or months for crops to land on your dinner plate. A prime example is my garlic harvest for 2022. After six months of growing, there remains the essential step of drying out garlic. How to cure garlic from the garden may be an overlooked part of the process, but it's essential for making the most of this delicious and sustainable homegrown food. What's up everyone? It's Scott from New Garden Road, always out here to inform, inspire, and elevate you. Encouraging biodiversity and restoring habitat is my mission one garden at a time. Roughly six months after you plant your garlic, generally in late spring, you want to begin to monitor the leaves for yellowing on the lower portion of the plant. You should still have some green growth up top. That's really important. I do think it's okay to harvest a little bit early. As long as they've had a good six months in the ground, you won't really be missing out on a lot of sizing up. I will say, however, the curing process starts before you harvest your garlic. In late spring, you need to reduce your water into every two weeks and allow the garlic to start to dry out a little bit. That's going to allow it to segment and the skins are going to become more papery. You're going to need a few tools for harvesting and curing your garlic. One of my favorites is the hori hori knife. When you harvest your garlic you got to be careful. You don't really just want to pull it out of the ground. Sometimes if it's really rooted well you run the risk of breaking that stem and that's going to be really important in the process so consider something like a hori hori knife or even a garden trowel would work just fine. You want to go straight down in the soil around that garlic head and begin to break those roots a little bit. Gently start to pull on it and you may hear some of the roots pop but as long as the stem stays intact you're good to go and once you've got all your garlic harvested I recommend using a pair of scissors garden pruners some garden shears may work just fine but I found over time despite trying to keep my tools sharp they just don't work on cutting the leaves in the same way that a pair of scissors will I got a special pair of scissors that I like to use and they've been in my family as long as I can remember they really work like a charm especially in instances like this when I'm pruning off some of the garlic leaves. For my specific method, I like to use spring clips in order to secure the heads of garlic to the grid that I hang them from. You could also use some garden twine. So in choosing how I like to cure my garlic, it really came down to available space. And my garden shed is the place where I get it all done. It might not be the ideal temperature, but I know it's got adequate ventilation. I've got a roof vent, I've got some side vents, and what I like to do is create a hanging rack assembly. You may have to get crafty and create your own solution for this but just check out the way I've done it and maybe that'll give you some ideas. What I did was I took a few stud hangers and combined those with some green garden stakes and some galvanized fencing. This is a 14 gauge galvanized fencing. I picked it up from Lowe's or Home Depot and I essentially used some galvanized wire to secure the green garden stakes at specific points on my grid. I did this in order to increase the stability of my grid and it's also the point in which I let them rest on those stud hangers. Some simple shelving might work just as well. You just want to make sure you've got adequate ventilation above and below those garlic. Before I hang up my garlic for curing, I like to trim it up just a little bit. All I'm doing is simply removing some of the excess leaves at the top of the garlic, and it keeps things a bit more tidy as the garlic cures. You always have the option of braiding your garlic. I might not be the best example of this part of the process, but I can tell you with some practice and patience, I feel like I did just fine. This step might not be completely necessary if you're growing a small amount of garlic, but for me, I'm growing quite a bit, and in order to get it all secured from my hanging grid, braiding was essential. Whether or not you braid those garlic, the next step is hanging them up to dry. And you're going to leave them in place for two to three weeks. That's the ideal amount of time for them to cure. You want to choose a dark, cool, and well ventilated area. Moisture leads to mold and that's something you want to avoid in the curing process for your garlic. Alright, so after about two to three weeks, your garlic has cured sufficiently and now it's time for the final trimming. Don't overdo it. Each layer of skin on that garlic is protecting those cloves and for long term storage, that is going to be essential. At this point in time, your garlic is really going to start to look like something that you get from the store. You can go ahead and cut off some of that stem, but make sure you leave a minimum of one inch of that stem intact. The main risk of trimming the stem too close to the head is going to be that you will expose it to air and moisture, which could lead to the development of mold. You can trim off some of the roots, but don't get into that basil plate too deep. Just enough to clean it up and leave the rest be. And I do have a few notes to share on long-term storage of your garlic. Just like the environment where you cured it in long term, you want to store it in 
a place that's relatively dark, cool, and well ventilated. One method that I'm really keen on is hanging them in some mesh produce bags. I think this works really well. Also, did you know that you can freeze whole heads of garlic? My mom taught me this years ago. It's really been a game changer in terms of preserving the harvest. And if you've ever frozen produce before, you know the texture will change. But I'll tell you from my experience, freezing heads of garlic doesn't do anything to diminish its flavor. If you do end up keeping your garlic in the freezer, just bear in mind that it won't be viable for planting afterwards. Consider saving some of your garlic harvest for planting the following season. Over the course of a few years, as the garlic adapts to your specific microclimate, you'll end up with your own heirloom variety. In early fall, if you have anything remaining from your garlic harvest, don't be surprised if you start to see it sprout. This means it's time to make use of it, preserve it, freeze it, however you choose. Otherwise, you need to get ready for planting. You can grow your own garlic. Hope you don't mind me clipping my script. Pretty yourself up a little bit. Sustainable and home. You gotta get the lid out, Blackburn. I want these garlic to dry out. Thank you. Oh boy. You know what? Now check out more awesome gardening videos on my channel. Like this video and follow New Garden Road for weekly content. You can grow your own awesome homegrown garlic. Keep it organic.